rock music or uh, I, I guess rock music, alternative rock with Sharon Von Etten, who is back after a few years off with we've been going about this all wrong. And we've been talking quite a bit about these female alternative rock artists over the last couple of years. Obviously, I think in terms of rock music, by far the most growing and full of interesting artists that that sphere is. But this album, Dave, does this do anything to change your opinion of Sharon on the front end? Or does it feel just like uh, more continued excellence? Yeah, I suppose it's more more continued excellence. It's their sixth record, first one in a few years. And I feel like she's kind of pretty established. She predates this female indie rock wave that's now the, the center of indie rock music for all intents and purposes. So I'm not sure what space she is because like a lot of those, a lot of the, a lot of these new people coming up that are stars in their own right, they cite her as a yeah, inspiration as, as as a reference point, you know. So I I think it's a little different, but uh, I'm also not like the massive Sharon Von Etten fan enough to really compare her records, but uh, I think it is interesting to see this be the follow up to to remind me tomorrow after a few years. But uh, yeah, I still liked it. It's I think the the better follow up question or the follow up question to my question should be, do we care? You know, if this mm. does anything to change your opinion, because I think when it comes to Sharon Bonnet and it, what she does and, and her ability to not only craft songs that are so textured and full and lived in, but also to like really craft these slow burns in a way that's super interesting and have these beautiful little flourishes that totally surprise you and but just feel so right. Um, she just is a, like you talked about this, like elder statesman of this genre at this point. And I don't know if we necessarily want her to be, you know, evolving out, out of this. I mean, not that I, I don't want her to be pushing herself as an artist. I think there's definitely some moments on this that, felt very seeing me to um, uh, remind me tomorrow. But also at times I was like, man, I, I really, really love what she did with this flourish where these horns come in or how she built this this song up. So I, I think I, I just left being really, really pleased with the album and just impressed with you know her craft as a, a singer songwriter at this point. She's she's a master, in my opinion. Um, what, what what stood out to you about the album? What what tracks are Mm -hmm. themes yeah i thought a uh, track two early on really gets you going uh home to me just because that instrumental is like super big and epic and builds up right in you know track two right off the bat uh that one really stood out to me i also really enjoyed uh the second to last track mistakes just because i thought the performance from sharon on that one's like really great and uh the guitar very noticeable on that one and then also uh, Headspace, kind of similarly, noticeable guitars, noticeable vocals, but also um, a little sprinkling of synths, which is, uh, you know, uh, random, I guess, for the rest of the record, but still effective. Those three songs really stood out to me. But like you said, overall, like Remind Me Tomorrow as well, this album is just very absorbing because that's how she performs and that's how she makes these songs where there's a lot a lot going on but it's all it's not like just throwing things at the wall it's all very specific and usually the songs really build themselves up the next thing you know there's like all these layers to the song as you said so yeah i think it's a at the very least very uh still unique in indie rock in terms of like recent releases and obviously we're must listen yeah i so uh, with mistakes and I, I agree with that what, what you, with what you just said but with mistakes that song reminds me probably the most of 17 actually probably like home to me and mistakes if you mash them together as a song would be because 17 her hit off of remind me tomorrow has that like slow build feel to it but with mistakes you know it, it has that like sticky or like memorable chorus that you just kind of want to sing along to or scream along to if you see her in person um even a make it mistake so it's so good and then you know another song that really stood out to me is headspace the the middle uh 
middle song on the album, um, which I think it's not only the chorus to that, but just like the churning nature of this felt almost like a, I don't know, like <laughs> a train or something like that in terms of how it built up. But with these like little like guitar synth flourishes around it, which I really, really loved. Um, but yeah, I think I think you hit the nail on the head with some of those. Come Back also stood out to me and Far Away was another standout. I really loved the the distorted guitar on that and uh, the, the percussion was really, really interesting, too. You know, she has like I talked about this ability to like build up a song and like texture it. And I was trying to think if there's another artist that mm. does it as well as her. The only one that came to mind for me was Tash Sultana. I don't know if you've listened to Tash Sultana at all. Um, really interesting artist who uh, she like keeps looping things over and over. So she's just constantly like building this like cacophony of sound, which is really, really <laughs> impressive. So is there anybody that comes to mind for you that does uh. that? No, that's a great question. I'm not. I'm not too sure. Um, definitely, probably someone who's more in like the singer slash producer side of things. Someone who's very involved yeah. in the creative process. So it would have to be someone like that. But no, no one immediately comes to mind beyond yeah. obviously like just generally like you know involved people like Kanye, I guess. But like you know, it's a it, it's a good company to be in when you're this kind of artist because it's just it's a specific way of making music, but also a really awesome way of kind of showing who you are and what your musical identity is, because you're going to, you're going to stand out basically by default. And it was kind yeah. of cool that Sharon didn't release any singles for this album too. I think that's a really cool, cool, but confident choice. Yeah. She seems very much just like, okay with who she is and, and what she's doing. And it, it always comes out good. So I don't blame her. Um, just one more note, uh, and I, I don't, I can't remember if it's the opener darkness fades. I think it might be the opener. She, her delivery and the way she sings on that reminded me so much of Radiohead. And I, I was wondering if maybe she was listening to something like, okay, computer with some of this, you know, mm. at times it sounds like mechanical, um, a little bit. And I was, it just felt very much like there might've been some influence to that. It, the themes of it are not close to okay. Computer, in my opinion. I mean, she's kind of just exploring human existence at this point in life. And uh, it, I don't know if there's anything like super groundbreaking in terms of her observations, but just the way that she crafts this is really, really great. So definitely, you know, I, I just wanted to mention this too. If you liked any of the new Taylor Swift albums, Evermore or Folklore, you really should go and listen to this stuff because this is where Taylor <laughs> probably got a lot of her, her like influence on that and like thoughts that, I mean, Desner probably too also was, uh, digging <laughs> Sharon Von Etten while they were making that. So uh, this is really, I think, the precipice for a lot of the source. Right. 